First of all, I'm Kate Serkin, EVP of Global Research at SMG and a member of the ARF board and, and happy to introduce the speakers for this session this afternoon. So welcome, Matt. He is, <laughs> sorry, the global head of product marketing at Facebook. So we've got the Googles and the Facebooks this afternoon. And he's gonna talk about what mobile means for marketing in general. All right. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. This is my first ARF, uh, so I thought I'd start by telling you all a little bit about what um, I do and what my team does. Our job is to set the product direction for the advertising products we build for our clients. So we try to look ahead into what's going to come next and what problems we need to solve. And research plays a pretty fundamental role in what we do. It gives us a sense of where the market's going. And it also tells us which products we're building are working and, frankly, which ones are not working. So I'll show you a couple of examples of that today. Thought I'd start off with a question. Show of hands, how many of you know how many page likes your business's page has on Facebook today? Awesome. Just one of you. <laughs> a couple of years ago, if I had asked you that question, I think a lot more hands would have been raised in the room because that's what we were talking about. How many likes do I have? How much engagement are my page posts getting? And we were also starting to ask a much more important question at that time, which was, how do those things create value for my business? Do those things drive sales? Do they help me build my brand? And at Facebook, we were asking that question too, and it actually represented a pretty fundamental shift in the way we thought about building products. I'll illustrate that for you here. This is what the advertising interface for the majority of Facebook's customers looked like three years ago. So hundreds of thousands of businesses would come to this page in a month to buy ads, and what does it tell you to do? In a, in a not so eloquent way, it tells you to buy page likes, buy more enge engagement for your posts, or do something advanced, it's a word that sounds kind of scary, like bid CPC. All right, here's what that interface looks like today. We've moved to a structure where we're trying to build products, actually solutions, that drive business value because they're based on the objectives that our customers have. Things like driving traffic to a website, getting installs of an app, driving engagement with that app, driving views of a video, selling things online. Now, in order to do that well, we need to be able to measure those things. And so measurement became a very integral part of how we build products. And up here are a few examples of, oh, that didn't render very well, uh, a few examples of common use cases for our advertisers, reaching a lot of customers, changing brand perceptions, driving sales in-store or driving sales online, and we had to create a measurement solution that would give us confidence that those things were working. And we do that both internally and with partners, some of you in the room today, like Nielsen for Brand Effect, Data Logics for measuring in-store sales. So measurement has become part of how we build products. It's a continuous cycle that starts with understanding what is the value we're trying to create, move a brand metric, drive a sale, how do we measure that? How do we measure that in a credible way that gives you confidence that it's working? And then as we're measuring that, what are we learning and how can we optimize the product to do more of what's working and less of what's not? All right, a few very real examples of that. Facebook is a mobile platform. Most of our users access the product on mobile devices and that number increases every single month. And most of our business runs on the mobile device. Most of the ads we serve are mobile. And so as consumers made this shift over the last few years from desktop behavior to mobile behavior, primarily mobile behavior on Facebook, we noticed that their patterns were changing for things that they did differently five, 10 years ago, like shopping. And here's some research that illustrates that. Some of it I assume you've seen before. 65% of people who are shopping in store are using their mobile phone while they're doing so. 40% of people who are starting an online transaction begin that process on a mobile phone. And around that same number of people, 40, 
start that process on one device and finish on another one. So if you're looking up something to buy or a ticket to get home tomorrow on your mobile phone now, it's pretty likely that you're gonna buy that either on a tablet or on a desktop computer. And what we saw with some of the ads running on Facebook for DR, for online sales conversions, was that a full 32% of desktop conversions were attributable to a mobile ad click. 32%. I think you saw similar research like this yesterday from Dan and Neha, and what we weren't doing was telling our customers, hey, this is how people are behaving on the platform. So we built something called cross-device reporting to help them understand what was going on. This is recently launched a few months ago. It shows for each device on which impressions were delivered within a campaign, where did the conversion happen? Did it happen on tablet? Did it happen on Android tablet or an iOS tablet? Did it happen on desktop? And that way you can understand where purchases are happening and adjust your campaign accordingly. And this is just one example of what is a pretty big problem for the industry, understanding this cross-device behavior. Our investment in Atlas is another way we're attacking this, so we can understand it not just on Facebook, but across mobile publishers. I apologize, these slides aren't great, so I'll tell you what's on this one. Um, actually, what that last slide shows is an example of a campaign that ran on Facebook recently where uh, the objective was to drive conversion for an auto website. So what was the CPA on, on that campaign? And while it's good that in a cross-device world we can report on conversions, it's not enough if we want to stand behind the statement that we're driving value for your business to just tell you where the conversions happened. We want to be able to tell you which conversions are uniquely attributable to the ads that we're running on Facebook. And that's a hard thing to do. Determining causality is a hard thing to do because there's multiple ways of looking at that. Everyone in this room is familiar with that. If you use last click, you're gonna get a very different result than if you use multi-touch attribution. And you're gonna get a very different result, again, if you use lift testing, which is our preferred method of measuring the causality of a given campaign. And the reason we believe in that is because it helps us isolate, or actually we think it's the most accurate way for us to isolate the unique impact that the Facebook campaign had on a target audience, holding out people who would have seen it otherwise and observing their behavior relative to those who did, is how we determine what we call lift. And we've done that manually, I think person to person, with a lot of the folks in this room over the years. But we, what we found is a lot of demand for that product from many of our clients, so we built a self-serve tool to help customers run those tests on their own. So this is a screenshot of what that product looks like. Right now, it's out in the market to help understand online conversions, like how many sales are happening on your website or in your app. But we'll be rolling this out for all the other objectives that I showed earlier for brand metrics, for in-store sales, et cetera, throughout the year. Okay. Video, really exciting product on Facebook. Raise your hand if you've seen more video in your Facebook newsfeed recently than you can remember last year. That's right, just about everybody. It totally took off on us last year. We've got three billion video views every day on Facebook, and 65% of those are happening on mobile devices. So what we think is happening, what we thought was happening when we were building the product was that Facebook was becoming a mobile discovery vehicle for video content. And when we did it, some research, we figured out that that's actually what was happening. People are accessing their phone throughout the day, they have more opportunities to shop, they have more opportunities to consume content than they did before because their device is with them all the time, and that's changing their behavior. And so we built an ad product to help take advantage of that behavior, and it too took off late last year. And so we dug in to figure out what was happening. Where is, where is value being created with this ad unit? And one of the really cool things we saw was that even before the video started playing, because of the header on the ad unit and the statement on the post, you could drive an increase in those metrics just as the ad was entering the viewport, even before the video started playing. And as the video started playing, those metrics started to increase. The longer people watched it, the more the metrics increased. So we thought this was pretty cool. You can deliver value with a video ad even before the video starts playing, and then it builds on it as it starts to roll. So to understand that more deeply, we did a bunch of research. And here it is. 
We partnered with Nielsen to do this. This represents the result of 173 video campaigns run on Facebook over the last two months across verticals. And what you can see is that a lot of value across a number of different metrics, recall, awareness, and purchase intent, increases dramatically in just the first three seconds that people are watching the video. And the majority of the value for the entire video is achieved in less than 10 seconds. Now that may seem strange given the video environment of 10, 20, 30 years ago, and it is because the way people are consuming video content on mobile is different than the way that they were consuming video content on desktop computers or on TV. So we think this is really exciting. Uh, we're gonna build more products around this. Um, we're gonna optimize for this. Uh, and we've actually published this research today on our Facebook for Business blog, so you can access it there. And this is pretty new, so we look forward to working with everyone in this room uh, to build on it and help understand it. So that's all I had for you today. I know I had 20 minutes. I got through that kind of quickly. Uh, but again, just wanted to thank you all for uh, having me here today. And uh, like I said, look forward to working with you to build on what we understand is working in our products and where we can take it from here. Thank you.